welcome to A Scott. Good morning and welcome. And welcome to A Scott Talk, a Fury show. I'm joined by the beautiful, the gorgeous, the royal empress. She goes by the name of Yvonne Michelle. Hey, 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 guys. How are you this morning? Brilliant. How are you, my darling? I'm wonderful. I am really, really good. The sun is shining uh -huh. and everything is good. And this show is just amazing so you know everything is good we give god thanks brilliant so we're going to get straight into it today so this is a this is part three of a three part media net tv special which we've been doing all about love languages and i've just started up a facebook uh, instagram live so everybody that's just logged in on Insta, if you want to go to media net tv on youtube you can join in and, and interact with my, myself and my special guests. Also, you can go onto the Facebook page, which is Media Net TV. If you go to their Facebook page now, we're streaming live on YouTube and we're streaming live on, on Facebook. So all week we've been discussing love languages. And what love languages, for those that have just joined us, is the language of love. So as you know, we can feel, we can feel attracted to somebody, you know, and we can have you know, chemistry romantically, but do we communicate in the same language when it comes to love? So my special guest has narrowed down the love languages to six principles and all week we've been discussing them. So over to you, we, we covered the first three principles in show one. Yesterday, we, we started to drill down a little bit and dissect how we communicate the language of love. And today we're going to pick it up from, we've got three more to get through. I, I know you, you finished yesterday's show by telling us point number four is quality time. So I'm really excited to get into that one. But before we start talking about quality time, just for those that have just joined us, just tell us what the first three are and then we'll just get straight into it, sis. Okay, so this is juicy stuff, guys. Juicy, juicy stuff. You want your relationship to work? These are the things that you need to know about. So going back to what we've already covered. So we, first of all, the first one is words of affirmation. That is um, where you build the person up. That's the love language that, that you love to receive. Being built up or the person's giving you words of affirmation. Number two is gifts. You may be a person that likes to receive gifts. It doesn't mean you're materialistic. It doesn't mean that you're just money grabbing and you just want people to buy you. But it means that you, when somebody buys you something, that's the way that you perceive that they love you. You know, they show you, they buy you little trinkets. They, when they see, even if it's a chocolate bar, they know that you like it. They'll buy it and say, babes, I saw this and I, I bought it for you. And then that makes you feel like this person is really invested in me. Right. So the third one was acts of service. Now, acts of service is that person who will do for you is the showing the action. You know, show me that you love me. Don't tell me. Show me. That's the acts of service. So that's a person who would like a person to say, for instance, they've just come home from work. When they come home from work, the dinner's cooked and ready. You know, the place has been tidied. That's what acts of service is. And that's how you want the person to show you um, how much they care about you because they want to help you. So those are the first three. So uh, words of affirmation, gifts and acts of service. Number four, the big one, I think the big one is quality time. Now, what does that look like? Let me just get this. Right. It means that you are giving, you are or you like undivided attention you like the person to to be into you to to invest their time to be with 
you, you alone, where you make plans to do things together. You know, this is your your language of love. This is what this is what you want. Someone that's gonna give you their undivided attention, is gonna spend time with you, is gonna love on you, and that's how you perceive that that person um, loves you. So, for instance, you know, you let me bring it to to a, a a client. A client has has come to me before and said, you know. You know, my partner doesn't spend any time with me, you know, doesn't spend any time doing things with me. So we're asking questions. So so what does that look like for you? Is Does your partner live with you? Yes. Is he there in the evenings? Yes. When he's at home, he's like on his own like little game thing, he's, you know, or he's doing something else. He's in the house, but he's not with her. Now, to some people, that would be like, well, he's in the house. He's not out. He's not gallivanting. He's in the house. He's there with you. But to her, he's, his attention is not on her. He's mindful of other things. It's not about her. So she doesn't feel valued because he doesn't have time for her. Now, let me just say this before I go any further. I may use examples and say rather she from the woman's point of view. And I wanna just clear this up. It's not that I don't have, um, think about things from the male point of view, but from what I do is I work predominantly, <clears throat> excuse me, I work predominantly with women. And so I can tell you story upon story upon story from a woman's point of view, because that's my experience. Um, I have experiences of men, but it's more to do with women. So it's not an infringement against men. I just want to really clear that up. It's just that I work a lot with women and these are the issues that they talk about. And so your, your quality time, it means that it's your undivided attention. You spend time, you do things together, you make plans together. And this is, this is I think this is a big, this is a big issue because there are many, many complaints that I come across where is like he, you know, the, the person doesn't have time for the other person and time is a real factor. So I don't know, how, how are you on the quality time, Ace? How, how have you, because you've been really, really um, open and honest about how you interacted in your past relationships. So how, and you were like, yesterday, was like, I failed on two out of three. So how, how was, quality time for you well, well it's, it's very interesting you say that sister because my phone never stopped ringing yesterday from women saying brilliant show brilliant show and we touched on so much depth you know so we covered so much in terms of the language and communication and it's mm. funny because one of my friends she called me last night and she said ace what's your love language and i said good question I, I said to her, I'm not going to answer that till after today's show because we haven't gone through all six. And I think mm -hmm. I'd do myself an injustice to answer that question at this stage. Right. But, but then I sat down and I contemplated and I already knew what my answer was regardless of whatever else I hear coming from this conversation. So I'm going to put it out here early. And I messaged her last night and I said, number four. And we haven't even really discussed it yet. But I said to her, my, if, if you want Ace's love language, it's quality time. You know, mm -hmm. I don't like. I said I'm not. I don't like gifts. I'm not mm -hmm. a gifty. I'm not a gifty person. So I don't like gifts. Um, I'm not. Yes, acts of service is good. You know, me, me, me like a little massage every now and then. Still, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a, a little meal cook for me. And but I'm an independent man. And one mm -hmm. of the things that a lot of the women that I have been in relationships have been attracted to me for is the fact that I love the fact that you're independent you're a man you know you cook your own food you iron your own clothes you're, you're, you're the man of your own house so I've always been independent you know so but for me if I'm in a relationship it's all about quality time it's about the time we spend together just just doing what we do best and mm -hmm. I, I want to throw a few things out there on quality time me personally Quality time, and this is this is deep. Shout out to my ex. <laughs> Shout out to my ex. Right? <laughs> this is deep because quality time 
for, doesn't necessarily mean you've got to be going out on dates. You've got no. to be spending lots of money. And I say that because what she used to say to me is, Ace, the best nights we have ever is when, a Friday night when we're just at home with a, with a takeaway watching a movie. That to her was the best nights ever. Just at home, chilling, wrap up sofa, look at Tia Koe, look at two popcorn, and we just cuddle up. That was her, that was quality time for her. Then I reflect on other uh, female relations that I've had. And I know another female who, she's very into nature and stuff like that. And for her, she loves nothing more than just going for like long walks out in like the park or, you know, nice green areas, landing. Mm. So, and that, just that time together, being in each other, not on your phone or, you know, that to me is very important. So I, I definitely agree with you that for me, my love language, quality, it's ace for ace, it's all about quality time. But I also want to just pick up on one more point you made there about being in the same house. And just because you're in the same house with someone doesn't mean you are spending quality time. Sometimes, and you know what it's like when you live with somebody, because I've been there as well, you get so complacent with that person. And because you are in a routine of life, getting mm -hmm. up, you know, going to work, taking the kids to school, doing all of those you know, monotonous tasks that we, you know, if, if you're in that really, that kind of family setup, you, you, you kind of forget about each other because you're so busy, you know, you've got to go to work. He's got to, and when you are in the house, sometimes you're, like, you're tired, you're stressed, you're like, you just want your, your, your little your, your space, you know, you, you can feel like, you know, this person's always in my face. So you can forget and uh, to appreciate each other. So I think it's, it's about being mind, mind, mindful of that. And I would say to anybody that is in a relation, a marriage, who has you know spent spending long periods of time together monotonously, to take time out for yourself, where it's just you time, you and you and the kids. Does that mean, no? So not you and the kids, just you without the kids. You know. That's that right. Yeah. Time. So it might be once again like a Friday night where you said, "Why it's, it's date night." You know, we're gonna send the kids mm -hmm. off to off to the parents, and you know, we you know we're gonna you know run around the house like teenagers again. You know, you know. So I think quality time for me is that is the uh, is the the, the the language that I scream personally. Mm -hmm. It's the loudest one for me. That speaks volumes. All the other stuff don't matter if the quality time's not there because that is where yeah. the souls unite as one. Yeah, I like that. The souls unite as well. I like that. See, as you're saying, that that quality time, it, it, the thing is, when you're in a relationship, you want quality from your partner, mm -hmm. bottom line. And if your partner is not spending or not investing the time in you, then a lot of people are like, well, what is the point? I'm like, like I said, I gave the example of being in the same home and, and you brought something up actually um, about a date night. So just hold that thought, hold that thought. So you're in the house all together. You live in the house. You see each other day in, day out. And like you said, you become complacent um, about your partner. And so, you know, one is upstairs, one is downstairs, one is in the garden, one is in the sitting room, one is in the kitchen, one is in the bathroom. You know, you're never really spending the quality, the, the, the wholeness of the relationship to actually just feel each other's presence, feel each other's energy, feel each other's, you know, passion. And so there's no, that's where the disconnect comes. And so Ace, you're saying that you are a person, quality time is your love language. So if the person's not spending quality time with you, then it just pulls pulls in all manner, manner of thoughts. Does this person like me? Is, is this person into me? Because they're not spending any time with me. How many of us have been in relationships and have had that thought in our mind? This person's not spending no time. Or you might not even be living together. It might be like you're on the phone. It's like, hi, Bibs, when am I going to see you? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I've got this, 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 this to do. And you might see me for an hour on Sunday and you're like thinking, well, what? I've got to wait all these days just to see you, to yeah. spend time with you. See, so guys, guys, those are the men who are listening. If you're late, if I hope you're listening. And females, I hope you're listening. If you live a busy, busy life 
and a lot of us do. We're from pillar to post on the run all the time. If your partner's asking you, when am I going to see you? There is a key. Listen to what they're asking you. When am I going to see you? They're telling you, this is my love language. I need to see you. I need to connect with you. So listen carefully. You know, it, it's easier to talk than it is to listen. And most of us do a lot of talking and don't listen. And when we are supposed to be listening, we're thinking of a response to come back to talk again. So we're not really listening. And this is the issues of why we're not hearing the love language between each other. Just to the point on um, um, date night, date night, right? You see that thing there, date night. Date night has helped so many couples because when my parents were together and when I was growing up, there was no such thing as date night. You ask an older person, yeah, the, the, the seniors, about date night, they'll tell you, wait, wait, I talk about date night. We're not on a date night. We just have a night. That's yeah. it. Ah, you get me? So yeah. now we have this thing, date night. So we, we can take the children to their grandparents or their godparents or their auntie and uncle. And like you said, you can get in the house now and just go buck quiet. And mm -hmm. it's you and your partner. And it's back to the days of when you were caught in, back to the days where you were free and you were single. And if you wanted to just take everything off and run run with no brazier with your partner you could do that do you get yeah. me and so the connection becomes more intimate it becomes more compelling it becomes more more sensual and that's what we all want De definitely i just want to um make two points off the back of that and i'm going to make yeah. reference to two previous relationships couple of things i just want to say once again for those on the instagram i put up the instagram live feed just so you guys on the insta could see what was going on so you don't miss out we're streaming live on media net live tv on facebook we're also streaming live on media net live tv on youtube so if you go over to youtube now type in media net live tv you can join in the conversation i just want to shout out to shout out to all the ladies logged on that's i'm um, putting your comments in the box Keep them coming. Shout out to Belinda. Salute. Big up yourself. We're going to get through some of the comments in a, in, a, in a little while. So keep the comments coming in, ladies. But just going back to quality time. And, and gentlemen, we've got one. Sorry, we got one from James Best as well. There's a gentleman here. Yeah. So yeah. big up, uh, Mr. Gentleman. Yes. Sorry, sorry. The sister don't want to leave out the man them. Yeah. So yeah, shout out <laughs> to the ladies and the gentlemen. Yeah. Keep, keep, your comments, keep your comments coming and we're going to read those out. And if anybody wants to ask us any questions about love language, we're here to answer those as well. I also just want to point out there, for those that are joining us for the first time, this young lady, today she's my guest, but oh, but but as of next week, she's going to be my co-host. So we're going to be starting up a, we haven't, we haven't named it yet, but we're going to be starting up a relationship show and we're going to be coming once a week, not from our the comfort of our studios, but from the comfort of MediaNet Live TV. Shout out to MediaNet TV, shout out to the producers, shout out to the managers, everybody that's making this dream a reality. But we're going to be doing a live interactive relationship show and we're going to cover everything from sex toys to bondage to freedom to swingers parties we're going to discuss it have you been to a swingers party we're going to talk about these things swinging there's a lot going on out there so we're going to we're going to create a platform we've created a platform where we can have these mature conversations in, 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 you know, and just, just to facilitate open dialogue because these are conversations we don't have you know, in, in this arena. But back to today, it's got talk and the right empress, Yvonne Michelle. So quality time, two points I want to pick up. And I'm just reflecting on a, pre a previous relationship I had where, like I said, I'm big on quality time. And I want, I want to reflect on something you said in our very, um, on part one, Yvonne, you made it very clear to the guys out there. You said, guys, when it comes to dealing with a female, you have to understand that every woman's different and you can't go into a relationship with the, the same expectations you have with one woman and bring those same expectations into love because they're completely different. And I think that is clear to, to point out because I think sometimes we get into the, the mindset of one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And if we all want the same things, then we must all act and be the same. Like most people all want a house, nice house. We want a nice house. Everyone wants a nice car. Everyone wants to be earning good money. So once again, we think, well, 
we, we, were, we were attracted to each other and we both want a nice house, we both want money, we both want a nice job. So we must be speaking the same language. But the, la the love language is not necessarily the same. And I'll give you an example, quality time. I told you that me and um, my ex broke up and, um, and I've also informed you that there was nothing, nothing major happened. I, there wasn't a big incident that took place that caused us to split. It's just that we were speaking the wrong language to each other for a period of time that continued to go until it kind of brought the relationship to a breaking point. And it's funny because I've identified that my love language is quality time. And mm -hmm. one of the things she used to feel is that the pressure was on her because I wanted to spend too much time with her. Wow. Okay. Do the maths. Okay. She used mm -hmm. to say, she used to say, I feel pressured. Mm. Like because you always want me to spend time with you. Now, had she understood that that was my love language, mm. she would have interpreted me wanting to spend time with her differently. She wouldn't have interpreted it as pressure. She would mm. have interpreted it as that's the way he communicates his affection. Yeah. And remember, in yesterday's conversation, I made reference to the fact that she was very... Give it, um, she was very gifty. She liked to give, but yeah. I didn't like gifts. So here mm. you've got somebody whose love language is, I like to spend quality time with the other, that's my love language. And then mm -hmm. her love language is, she was very giving, very gifted, very giving. That was her love language. So we both were attracted to each other, but we communicated the, our, our, our affection in completely different ways. Yeah. Absolutely. So such a good example, such a good Catholic example you like to be there you like the time and she likes to give mm. so what you you see and the thing is now now that you identify with the language you're more acceptant of how that person is do you see what I'm saying because the first thing in everything in everything in capacity of life when we're going through difficult times when we're going through good times whatever it is the main thing that we need to do as individuals is accept whatever is around us what is going on around can we accept that once we accept the situation or accept ourselves for who we are accept the person for the way that they love us accept ourselves for the way that we love then we can begin to formulate this relationship and make it work because your love languages can be, if your love languages are different, it doesn't mean to say that you won't get on. That's, it's got nothing to do with it. It's identifying what the language is and then looking at it, accepting it, accepting that person for who they are and how they love right and so once you both have that understanding on each side then you can understand that because with quality time like you said sometimes it can be perceived as being needy let me just say that again quality time can sometimes be perceived as the person being needy but it's not necessarily that they're needy it's just the fact that they want to spend time so you have to accept them for who they are and how they love that makes sense. And I'm glad you made that point right at the end there because that is how I, I have been made to feel in the past. And I think I'm not a needy person because I'm not an insecure guy. I'm never a guy that will be going through your phone. You know, you know that. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those guys that will call you and say, where are you? Or who are you with? I'm not a jealous guy because mm -hmm. I'm so secure in myself that I'm, I don't feel that I'm not insecure if my, if my females around other guys. I'm a secure mm -hmm. guy like that. So I'm not insecure, but you can be made to feel needy. And at times I, in the past, have felt needy in a relationship. I mean, like, I'm not a needy person. I just want to spend time. You're my baby. We just want, mm -hmm. and, and it got to that. And I know she felt that. Like, why is he so needy? I can't give you what you want. He always wants me to spend time. I feel pressure. But you're my, you're my baby. I suddenly love you. Do you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so that point at the end, I think just nailed it clean neediness i want to read out Ooh. one or two comments on the coming through the live live comments so shout out to belinda who says good morning yvonne and ace literally just watched your previous two shows and i'm hooked yeah so thank you, thank you very, thank you very much for that one also belinda says big up yourselves so needed and out, out outside of these times right do you know what the comment that 
I read after that that just literally brought tears into my eyes, right? It's 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 Miss M I B twenty two. And I read mm -hmm. it once and I thought, what? And then I read the comment again and then I got what she meant and it just brought tears into my eyes because I could imagine it. She goes, My hubby and I have quality time on a drive. Get in a takeaway, park up and eat it. So I feel she said, I think she said on my drive, I think what they do is they get they they, they buy a little takeaway. And mm -hmm. then them drive home and then park up on their driveway and mm -hmm. then they're sitting in the car, you know, just and they, yeah. food and holding their little vibe, but maybe before they go in the house and the kids start, ah, mommy, daddy, but, but I like mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it, yeah. it's not, once again, quality time is, it doesn't have to be the big grand gestures, yeah. it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be over romantic, it doesn't even have to be financial a financial burden sometimes it's the little thing and it boils down to the, the, the two words at the end of the day it, 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 quality and time oh. and that is just spending quality time with somebody you can spend time with somebody but not it's not necessarily quality time i we're in the same environment but i'm staring at the tv and you're whatsapping your girlfriends i could spend exactly. six hours with you like that that's not quality time or i can mm -hmm. spend half about 40 minutes in the car with my hubby or my wifey having a little takeaway and reasoning, that 45 minutes of just you time is so important. Absolutely. It is. It's how the relationship thrives. And that's what we want. We want our relationships to thrive. We want, we want it, it to have longevity. You know, that many, many people like from hand to hand, like a, a bad penny, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. we, we don't want that. We don't want to be with this relationship, that relationship, that we want to find somebody that's our our equal, our partner, the person that accepts us for who we are and that we can accept them for who they are. And then have that that quality of time, that that just that pocket. Sometimes that's what I like to call it, a pocket of time just for yeah. me and you. Yeah. That's ours that we share. And then we have those memories. Do you remember that time when we did this? Do you remember that time? And it could just, it doesn't even have to be an hour. It could be half an hour. You know, yeah. babes, let's just spend that time. And you're just talking, reasoning together. And it's, and it's beautiful what you're making because it's your quality time. So, yeah, so... I, I like the thought, you know, I, I, in my head, my imagination is that they might have a lot of kids or whatever or young children at home and they're just in the car and they're just jamming. And that, to me, it's just nice. You know, you got your little takeaway, you sit down and you're just jamming and talking in the car. That's nice. So, so kudos to you guys. Uh, however you're having your quality time, as long as you're having it, that's what counts. Definitely, definitely. And I just want to throw one little more point in there about quality time. And... As I said, it's always about evolving. Ace got talk, I'm an open book, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And the more honest you are with yourself, is the more you allow yourself to grow. You know, okay. so it's always about looking at yourself in reflection, 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 reflection. In fact, it goes, I didn't mean to, but it goes to a quote I've got on my wall right behind me here. You can see it. Ace, here it is. It says, you've got to be better today than you was yesterday. I don't know why I'm an ace up there because I'm talking to myself. You got to be better today than you was yesterday. So it's the, the little things that you do every day that you that even if it's just a small improvement, should be a slight, slightly, slightly better. So I remember reflecting on another relationship that I, I, I had, and I didn't get to see that person so much, also. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to them, What? Coming like, what, what are we can I don't really get to see you. But when that person actually said to me, hey, do you know what it is? Monday to Friday, I go to work nine to five. After work, I want to go to the gym. You know, by the time I finish the gym and I get home and I have my shower and, you know, I just want to eat and sleep. I've got to get up and go work in the morning. So if I don't really see you too hard in the week, it's not personal, you know. It's not because I don't check for you. It's just that my routine, weekends are more flexible. Mm -hmm. Now, just that little bit of dialogue, and that understanding, it changed the whole way around. So even mm -hmm. if I see you once a week, it feels like quality time because there's an understanding of, okay, it's not that you don't want to spend bare time with me. It's just that this is what time permits. So it's 
when mm-hmm. it's about understanding each other's language, love language, and communicating that effectively, that the person understands that it's not me. Because if you got these stuff, you go up to this person. You know, what, mm-hmm. what, you're, you're, what, you're a man. You understand? Like, do you understand? All yeah. kind of little yeah. thoughts can start creeping into your head. So it's, it all boils down to communication, 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 and understanding. Absolutely. Yeah, the person's coming. Um, sis, I think number five is knocking on the door, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Number five, here we go. Physical touch. Woo! <laughs> right? It's physical touch. Are you, is your language, is your love language physical touch? Do you like to be touched? You know, just a little touch. Now, when I'm talking about touch, guys, I don't want you to get overly excited and think it's a touch up, feely, feely, butter man, breast and all of them thing there, touching up your man. It's not like that, right? It is physical touch where you hold hands, the hugging, the kissing, you know, little peck on the cheek, you know, it don't have to be a full on blown, you know, because sometimes when you talk about physical touch, people automatically go from, from zero to a hundred, where a hundred, if we're looking at it, a hundred is the the whole sexual um, intercourse thing. No, we're not talking about that. We are talking about the language of love. And so it's, you know, um, like sometimes when you're talking to someone and they just put their hand on your knee, just gently, and then they take their hand off. They, they, they're touchy-feely people. Some people are really like that. And I was having a conversation, I was having a conversation with, with someone and they were saying that they were um, in, their, in their conversation with their child, it was with their child. They, they, their child is now older and they were like talking about the love languages, this is recent. And the child was saying, you know, you know, I, I didn't like the way, when I was growing up, I didn't like the way that you used to like hold me and kiss me on my cheek or, or pat me on my bum like this as I'm passing, hello darling, like this. And, pat. and the parent, the older person was quite taken back because they didn't realize that that was not, that, that that their child didn't actually like that because the touching is not their love language. It's the parent's love language because the parent is very huggy, come and come on, give, give mommy a kiss and blah, 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 and holding on and, and all of that stuff. The child actually said, I don't like that. Mm. I don't like that. That's not my love language. My love language is gifts. That's, you know, so you can see, and this is, this is between parent and child. So this conversation that we're having, I want to let you know how important it is for us to start to understand how we perceive love. Yeah. And it's love in general, as well as in relationship as partnership, relationship as father and son, relationship daughter mother however you want to mix it up so physical touch is the expression of love to a lot of people so i am uh, you know i can uh, use an example of of being in a relationship and it's not that i am not a touchy feely person because i am i do like it but in its time. And so this was my example, giving you an example, and I'm sure some people will be able to relate to this. So in a relationship that I've had before, the person, you know, would like to touch and and hug me and and, and just want to just hold on to me. But I'm like this, I'm on my laptop and I'm doing my stuff and I'm working and I'm saying to the person, Hold on now, wait no man. Do you know what I mean? Let me just do what I'm doing. And that person felt like I was rejecting them because mm. that's their, they, they wanted to, their love language was to, to touch me, but that's not how I respond to, that's not my love language. That's mm. my, my language, love language really, it, I've got, to me it's two, it's not one, <laughs> special. So, Mine is more like um, quality time and acts of service. Those are the two main things for me, I think. Um, so, so for him, he felt that I was rejecting him because I was constantly like, I've got this to do. But if he had maybe approached me with, can I help you do what you're doing? 
You hear what I'm saying? Can yeah. I help you do what you're doing? Then that would have opened the door to the touchy feely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So I hope that that helps somebody. Def definitely, definitely. Today, what I want to try and do is keep the stay, keep the comments. I'm going to read the comments in in timing, so they're actually in flow with the, what we're talking about at that time. So just backtracking. Firstly, good morning, Carol. Good morning to you, my darling. Three in a row, you you scored the hat trick. Good morning to James as well. Um, big up yourself. The the queen never left you out for a She now left out the brothers. Them. So big up yourself. She says. James says, real talk and love. On our previous chat about quality time, Miss MIB, she says that um, we, we, we have date nights as and when. So they're not regular, they're not planned. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they, 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 and, it, and it's nothing extravagant, just little mild things like, like what we were saying, holding hands, etc. Mm. Um, it doesn't have to be the big gestures, it's just that uh, uh, affection. Um, so, um, sometimes quality time is random. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Go on. Touchy feely. There's a comment about touchy feely, but I want to um, put my two pence worth in first. So, okay. Physical contact. Now, a, a lot of the stuff we talk about when we, when we, when me and yourself talk about love languages, it this is not just restricted to relationships. Mm. The language we, you can broaden this into all different environments. In fact. If you can import it to anybody that any any human being that you communicate with, it's understanding yeah. their language. You understand mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Even since me and you have been conversating, I'm sitting there working like, what, what's your love language? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and, but by you sharing stories about being at the computer and working, it tells me little things about how you like to be communicating with. But you want to take the physical contact into another arena. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how it has the same impact in a completely different era. It's got talk for the last two decades. I've been a personal trainer and I've been a boxing coach. I've owned my own boxing club. Now, I've, my, uh, my boxing club was very niche where I trained a lot of women. So wow. I had packed classes full of women. Now, I am in this environment, not in, say, relationship, but in my gym environment, I'm very huggy. I'm a huggy person. Mm -hmm. Let me make I'm not touchy-feely when I'm training my clients. I don't like those types of trainers. I, I've got a big problem with trainers that when they're training their clients, they're touching and adjusting their clients. You should be able to verbally adjust your client. I don't like that trainers that are hands-on. But one thing I would do is every time my members came through the gym, she'd be like, oh, hi! Big mm hug! -hmm. Like, oh, hi! How are you doing? Good evening! Hug! Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten women responded, ah, but you had some that just said, Yeah. Just, Hi, how are you? And they were just, Language again, language. Yeah. They weren't mm -hmm. touchy people. So for them, that could, could, could feel quite intrusive. Yes. But for, but for somebody that is a huggy person like me, it's warm. Mm -hmm. It's warm. Oh, hi. Do you get what I'm saying? So once again, understanding people's language, it can be, it, it can go in, it can be, it can be rippled into so many different environments. And I'm going to give you another one just quickly because it kind of rolls into the whole personal training environment. Not only was I very physical, very huggy, but and I realized that not everybody liked that, but affirmations. I am very complimentary. Mm -hmm. very, I'm very, I'm very complimentary, and I would always be very positive in terms of my compliments towards ladies. Not, 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 not um sleazy, but very complimentary. And, oh, thank you, and you know, very, you know, always boosting people's morales, raising people's self esteem. You know, always giving them very, very complimentary. And once again, nine out of women love compliments. You know. Like, yes, like, told, mm -hmm. told nice things about yourself, but sometimes again, not I've noticed not everybody takes compliment compliment as well. Now, in terms of my, my language, that was my language of that was my love language in regards to showing my warmth for my affection to my members. Like, oh no, you look great, and why look, look? But for some people, they could uh, some people don't take compliments well. So That's even true. though you you're talking in a love language that is just genuine from a place of I just want to make you raise your self esteem. I just want to say something mm -hmm. to make you make you feel make put a smile on your face. 
that could be interpreted in another way. Mm. In another way. So mm. just 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 throwing that into the, the, the mixing it mixing pot there. What's your thoughts, sister? My thoughts on this, you know, what you're saying, you've hit the nail on the head um, in terms of the, the explanation, even with the, the broader cycle of, of life and where it is and what we're doing and the people that we meet. I mean, there are, it, it, for me, it depends on who the person is and what the occasion is. I'm, I mean, when you were talking about with your boxing club, I was actually imagining in my mind what that would be like, what it would feel like for a person to walk through the door. And I think if I was just coming in to your gym, for instance, and, and I'd never been in there before and you greeted me with a hug, I think I would probably be one of those people like that. <laughs> like, okay. Because I would find that uncomfortable because I don't, I, I wouldn't have known you like that. But once I've been there once and I've quite had a little conversation, the next time I come, they say, oh, hi, hug. Yeah, I could do that. So I think, guys, you know, in all of these languages that we are seeing, you know, we have to kind of start thinking about how it's going to be perceived, one, and two, when is the appropriate time to, to show your love, your love language to another person so if someone knows you then that's fine I mean there are there are people that I you know I meet there are the places that I go and I see people and they hug and we're cool but uh, you know like with my my cousin is a very touchy she likes that she's very touchy feeling she likes that so she's immediately hi blah 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 to with everybody but for me I have to I'm like let me just take a step back first let me just no, let me just check who you are. Let me check your spirit if I like you. <laughs> and if I don't, then, you know, I'm very reserved like that. But that's just me. And there are hundreds of thousands of other people who feel like that. So we have to be mindful of how we are being perceived um, moving forward. So just, quick, just quickly, just on that note, sis, if, 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 you, if I don't, I would just like to add something to just that last yeah. point. So firstly, look, look on me, right? Yeah, we look, we look like we're gonna hug up stranger. Yeah, we look like the first time I see you, we're just gonna come hug. Ah! No, come on. <laughs> no, but you know that some, some people, some people like that. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, I yeah. was talking about what I was making reference to is no matter how long a relationship you've had with somebody, and I'm thinking of mm -hmm. particular clients right now that I could actually yeah. name and it would do no harm. But there's clients of mine that been members three years. And even after right. three years, with, I'm still, ah, hi. There's still, there's just, it doesn't matter how long or how well you are custom or you have a good relationship, they're just not that way inclined. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I was making okay. more that type, that type of reference. I just want to read that a comment here. Um, young lady says, my husband is touchy-feely and I know that that's him. Yeah, I, I've come to understand him, and over the last 34 years, however, it can. Sorry, start again. My husband is touchy feely, and I know that's him, and I have come to understand him over the last 35 years. However, it can change depending on different circumstances. So, okay, is that is that the touchy feeliness that can change? Um, dependent on the circumstances. Yeah, could you elaborate, sis? Is that the touchy feely that could elaborate on different circumstances? And then um, Yvonne will um, comment on. I'll just read out a few more comments before you move on, Yvonne. Um, Belinda says, "Interesting, but you, but we, but are we saying then that we should not be our authentic selves?" Then, Yvonne, would you would you say to that? Not at all. I think I think in every situation in your lifetime that being your authentic self is the most important thing. It's tiring. If nothing else, it's tiring when you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. So, you know, we in a relationship, you want to be your authentic self. But what we're talking about is actually understanding the other person's love language, how they need or how they want to be loved. So, so it's not so much about it's good for us to know our own love language so that we know how we like to be loved. But it's equally as important that we understand our, our partner's love language. That way we can communicate at a higher level and a higher vibration. Absolutely not. The fake in it, forget that. Don't bother with that because then the person's going to fall in love with a person that's not real. 
You have to be for your for a relationship to to last and have authenticity. You have to be yourself. And let me just say this: I have a friend. I had a friend um, I've known for probably like thirty years, and she got divorced after twenty one years of marriage. And I was like, "What? Twenty one years? You've spent all this time with this person? Why?" You know, and I'm good friends with both of them. And she said to me, because she spent the last 20 years being who she thought he wanted her to be. Oh, brilliant. And she brilliant. got tired. She was just brilliant. like, I don't want to be in this no more. Do you get me? So don't do it to yourself. 21 years of marriage and it now divorced. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Look, I don't think my smart could get any bigger. That is sweet. And I'm not even going to touch on that right now because if I touch on that 20 years, right, you know, where we, you know what's going to happen. Here. But let me give you some, I'm going to read out a few comments and we're going to tie this up. So in, rela in relation to Belinda's question, she just says you've answered it. In relation to the um, Miss MIB who talked about her husband being touchy-feely and it can um, change it depending on the circumstance, she's saying yes. Make sense? Say that again for me, darling. I'll read the comment. Out. So, my husband is touchy feely, and I know that's him. And I have come to understand him over the, the, the past 34, 34 years. However, okay. it can change depending on the circumstance. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you previously asked the question in relation to the, the, the environment, mm -hmm. and she's just replied and says, Yes, okay, so yeah. Uh, there are some people, the environment, so yeah, so there are some people, hear, hear this, that like to be touched, but don't like to be touched in certain environments. Is this where she's going? So she, is this what she's saying? So you've got to get to know your partner, because trust me, I don't mind a little feel up, feel up, feel up, right? <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, you know, I like to play little games and stuff here. That's just me, right? Yeah, yeah. But let me tell you this, when we're out in certain places, don't, don't, don't be doing that. Mm. There's a time and there is a place for everything under the sun. And so, so you have to know when. So your husband or or you, your husband's touchy-feely, so he knows when to touch you, when he wants to touch you, and he knows the right times to touch you. And sometimes if you're not the touchy-feely person and your partner is, and they're touching you, then you that's where conversation comes and say, babes, you know I love you touching me. You know, you know I'm like, you're feeling me up, you make me feel nice. But not everywhere. You're not everywhere, darling, because it's not appropriate. So, you know, you might want to, you might want to touch up your bottom when you're pushing the, the shopping trolley and you might think that's all right. But then you might go to dinner at your parents' house mm. and he's up behind you rubbing your bottom and you're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that's not the right time. De depends on how you feel. So that's something that you work out between you. But the, the, the good thing about this is that you recognize your husband's love language. That is the most powerful thing, is that you know it, you recognize it, and you've accepted it, and you're in your marriage for 30 odd years. And kudos to you, and I'm giving you a round of applause because we don't see that a lot these days. Yeah, Marriages definitely. are not laughing, so thank you so much, and keep doing what you're doing because it's working, it's definitely. working. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And um, the last comment from the sister there says, if he's going through a stressful time, he would be he would be more doing acts of service. And Lani just comments on the previous conversation we having in regards to he said, if you if you are not used to compliments, it will be alien to the person and it might be received negatively. Yeah, because again, this is like um, words of affirmation. Again, if they're complimenting you, complimenting you, s women, let me just address the women for a minute. Because many, many a time we get compliments. You, do you, really, do you think so? You look really nice in that dress. Do you think so? This thing, oh, I only got it from Primark. Stop it. And that's just a general thing. That doesn't even have to be from a partner affirmations M most women a lot of women find it really difficult to accept the compliment but you know what once you start to understand 
who you are and what you're worth, you can take the compliment and say, thank you. Even if it feels uncomfortable, just say, thank you. Learn. And that for me is a, is a reflection of how you're feeling about yourself. That's self-worth right there. Let's, you know, so I hear, I hear the comment, you know, make you feel uncomfortable. And it does make a lot. There are lots of people who do not like words of affirmation. That's not their love language. But if it's your love language and it's not your partner's and they feel uncomfortable, you have to understand that you that you will have to adapt the way in which you show your love. And that's what we're talking about. So it's I want us to focus and think, right, this is my language. But the most important thing is I need to know what my partner's love language is. That's what I need to know to make this work and vice versa. Because if you're giving your partner what they need and they're giving you what you need, then everything is well and adjusted. See how this is? Look, look at the hand. Everything is together. Everything is good. But if your love language is this and their love language is that and you're not you're not understanding, all you're going to get is this, isn't it? The knocking of heads. There's not going to be that that togetherness because you're not feeding each other. You're starving each other Brilliant. of what you need. Absolutely. Yeah? That's how we want to be. Feeding, not starving. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, Ace Scott Talk. I'm the winner of the World Motivational Speaker Competition 2019. And Yvonne Michelle, international, mo inspirational, motivational speaker, female empower. This is what happens when masculine and feminine energies Harmonize. It's got talk. Media Net TV. London town to the world. You've been an absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing audience. You know, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for your participation. Your, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in there, sis. Don't worry. <laughs> thanks for your. Thanks for that. Give me a sec. Thanks for your. Thanks for your participation. She's been. Hold on, hold on. We still got one more point. We got number six. We got number yeah, six. I but this has been a part three trilogy. It started on Wednesday and the energy is just rolled on. We've done um, part one Wednesday, part two Thursday, part three Friday. And I did say we are going to end it today regardless. Part three, it's a wrap. Um, and then we're going to do that. We've got, you know, eight minutes left. But you guys want to hear number six, right? You want you you, you want to hear how the story ends, you know? Because we, we've gone through love languages, but there is one more. Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you're gonna you're gonna have to join us in a fortnight's time on our live TV. Me, me and the sister Michelle Ace got talk into the, um world motivational speaker competition winner and international motivational speaker. We're gonna launch a new show, MediaNet TV. And what we will do is we will start our debut show on lo love languages and we'll give you, we'll hit you with number six. So that will just tie this together. In the meantime, guys, if you could share all three episodes, please share it on your Facebook, you know, share, share on um, your YouTube, share with your friends, share with your sisters, tell the sisters to tell the sisters. And in, in two weeks time, we're going to come back with brand new debut show. It's going to be a, a continual show, live, media net TV, in the studio, once a week, and we're going to do relationship. We're going to open up the can of worms, and we're going to just go through all the topics. And like I said previously, if, you, if there's any topics you want us to discuss, if there's any areas of relationship you want us to have, spark an open conversation on, um, drop us an email, um, media net TV, the, the email address will be in the comments below shortly. If you drop us an email, write it to you with media TV, say just um, attention of Ace Got Talk, um, put, you know, to the topic you want us to talk about, we will cover it. Michelle, over to you, my darling. Yeah, so I just want, yeah, so so what you're saying is the sixth one, they have to wait for that. That's what you're saying, isn't it? I'm saying well, I'm, it's, it's up to you if you want to tell them the yeah. title or if you want to keep it in suspense. Yeah, we have to wait for that, you know. But we're, mm, no, no. And that will just no, tie everything no. together. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say the the sixth one because. No, uh, but what I am gonna say is this: is that um, there is, even there's six, but there is uh, for me there is a uh, there is actually seven, for me, and um, so 
it would be good to actually bring that back again. Uh, I'm not even going to drop it today. I'm not dropping it. Because the thing is, I think this is a conversation that we need to have, Mm -hmm. especially amongst our people. We need Mm -hmm. to have this. Relationships are falling apart. Um, we, We know that we are in this predicament of time and people are... Um, isolating together, they are, uh, and, and relationships are under pressure. So uh, some relationships are under pressure, some are thriving. So we want to help those that are under pressure. And that we also want to help those that are thriving to thrive a little bit more. So, so yeah, I'm in agreement with you to leave the other two. Because, I mean, I know that the, the person who wrote about the love languages, he started off with five, then he start, then he's created another one to make it six. But I have one to make it number seven, because what all of this what we've talked about in the seventh one, it doesn't cover it. And I think it's really, really important because there are people who need this in their relation. It's their language. It is. Right. And so if you want to find out what that is and there's going to be hundreds of thousands of you like, yes, 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 this is true. You join us in two weeks' time for our new show. Brilliant. Brilliant. And can, all will be revealed. Can I just add to that, sister, that mm-hmm. it's not just people that are in relationships. Because That's true. myself and yourself are both single. And I would say that just going through the love, the love languages with you over the last few days has helped me understand women better. Mm. And how do different women communicate? Because I've always said, you know, they say man is from Mars, women are from Venus. And yep. we know that, but how do we this is actually marrying those two, those two alien planets together? Like, oh, there's a language we can both speak. I'm from Mars, you're from Venus, but oh, is that your language? So I think that mm-hmm. this is very powerful and it's very helpful for also single people in terms oh, yeah. of moving on and finding the next relationship and actually starting to understand women in a different way Mm. and men in a different way, you know, men and women, even me just opening up and sharing how I communicate. There might be women that are there that are seeing traits in me and their partners and thinking, Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's what he meant when he was been talking. He's not being needy. That's the way Mm -hmm. he... Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah all, all that and more to come. We've got two minutes left, sister. Do you want to just give us a 60-second summary? 60, sum- 60, sum- 60 second summary. So, love language number one. What was that? That was a words of affirmation, affirmation. Yeah? yeah? Words of affirmation. Number two was gifts. Like You like to receive gifts. The third one is acts of service it's a biggie it's a biggie even for parents and children pick up after yourself many couples why does he have to leave his socks in the middle of the room just pick up the socks because when you leave your socks on the floor that's telling her that you don't love her you don't love you don't appreciate her number four quality time where you're spending time with each other and you're you you know you just you just want to be with each other for that time and it's quality the quality of time and the fifth one was physical touch that touchy feely you know i want to put my arms around my baby i want to hold your hand i want to touch and i want to kiss your hand those kinds of things we've got two more but you're going to find out those two more when we do we start our new show in two weeks time so those are the five right? Those are the five. And if you want to find out more, make sure that you are following Media Net Live TV. Ace Ford, me, myself, Yvonne Michelle. You can find me on all social media outlets. Yvonne Michelle with one L. And if you want to contact me, need any more information, my email is info at yvonnemichelle.com. Thank you very much, sister. God bless you. So, guys, God bless you, stay blessed, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. We're going to be launching our brand new relationship show, and we'll open up the show with the dialogue on love languages, and we're going to give you six, and if we've got time, possibly seven. Until then, stay blessed. Salute.
patients who've recovered all aspects 